Suppose you wanted to draw a quadrilateral using the points below as vertices or corners. The points are spaced one unit apart horizontally and two units apart vertically. First question is how many quadrilaterals are possible? Well, the number of quadrilaterals is equal to the number of ways we can select two points from row one times the number of ways we can select two points from row two. And since the order doesn't matter, the number of ways of selecting two points from row one is six choose two because there are six points and we're choosing two of them. And the number of ways of selecting two points from row two is also six choose two. This indicates the number of quadrilaterals is equal to six choose two times six choose two. Six choose two is equal to 15, giving us 15 times 15, which is equal to 225 quadrilaterals. The next question is, how many are squares? Remember, a square is a quadrilateral where all the angles are 90 degrees and all sides have equal length. To find the number of squares, I think we'll just go ahead and sketch them. Remember, the points are spaced out one unit horizontally and two units vertically. Working our way from left to right, this would be the first square. And then we'll go ahead and shift this square over one unit until we run out of space. So there's one, two, three, and finally we have four squares. So there are four squares. The next question is how many are rectangles? Where a rectangle is a quadrilateral where all the angles are 90 degrees and the opposite sides have equal length. To form a rectangle, we can select any two points in row one, but once we select those two points, we must select the two points directly below those points in row two to form a rectangle. For example, if this point and this point were selected from row one, then we have to select this point and this point in row two, the points directly below the points in row one, in order to form a rectangle. This indicates the number of rectangles is equal to the number of ways we can choose two points from row one, and then just times one, which is the number of ways of selecting the two points in row two that are directly below the two points just chosen in row one. So the number of rectangles is equal to six choose two times one, if we one or two, the number of ways of selecting two points from two points in row two, which would be two choose two, which is equal to one. This gives us 15 times one, which is 15. There are 15 rectangles. And now let's talk about the number of parallelograms. To count the number of parallelograms, we will consider cases where the first case will be when the top and bottom of the parallelogram have a length of one, then when the top and bottom have a length of two, then a length of three, then a length of four, and finally a length of five. So let's begin by determining how many parallelograms we can form where the top and bottom have a length of one. Well, let's begin by determining how many lengths of one or segments of length one are in row one. We can go ahead and just highlight them or count them. There's one, two, three, four, and five segments or sides of length one in row one. Of course, there's also five segments or sides of length one in row two. And therefore, the number of parallelograms where the top and bottom have length one is equal to the number of ways we can select a side of length one from row one times the number of ways we can select a set of length one from row two, which is five times five, or 25. As an example, let's just say this was one side selected in row one of length one, and this was the second side in row two of length one. Notice how this does form a parallelogram. And now let's consider the parallelograms where the top and bottom have a length of two. We need to determine how many sides of length two we can form in row one. So we have one, and then we shift it over one unit, two, three, and finally four. There are four ways to select a set of length two from row one, as well as four ways to select a set of length two from row two, which indicates there are four times four, 16 parallelograms 
where the top and bottom have a length of two. So we have plus four times four and then plus. Now we'll consider the case when the top and bottom have a length of three. So let's go ahead and highlight the sides of length three. There's one, two, and three. So there are three ways to select a set of length three from row one, and three ways to select a set of length three from row two. There are three times three, or nine, parallelograms, where the top and bottom have a length of three. And now we'll consider when the top and bottom have length four. You may start to see a pattern here. There's one set of length four, and there's the second set of length four. So there's two ways to select a set of length four from row one, and two ways to select a set of length four from row two. There are two times two or four parallelograms where the top and bottom have lengths of four. So that gives us plus two times two. And finally, the last case is when the top and bottom have a length of five. There's only one way to select a set of length five from row one and one way from row two. Notice how this forms a rectangle, but all rectangles are parallelograms. There's only one times one, or one parallelogram, where the top and bottom have length five. Notice how we have a sum of squares here. We have 25 plus 16 plus nine plus four plus one, which is equal to 55. There are 55 parallelograms. The next question is how many are trapezoids, where a trapezoid is defined as a quadrilateral with at least one pair of parallel sides. In particular, using this definition, Parallelograms are trapezoids. Any sides formed using points from row one and row two are going to have one pair of parallel sides, and therefore all the quadrilaterals are also trapezoids. So from the first question, we know because there are 225 quadrilaterals, we also have 225 trapezoids. The last question is how many are trapezoids that are not parallelograms? Well, to answer this question, we simply take all the trapezoids and then subtract the number of parallelograms, which gives us 225 minus 55, which equals 170 trapezoids that are not parallelograms. I hope you found this helpful.